Last time my guest was here on the show, Joe Biden was still in the race. Donald Trump was on top of the polls. Most of the nation never heard of Tim Walz or J.D. Vance, and RFK didn't have literal bear cub blood on his hands. Times have changed. Let's talk about the state of the race with our friend Sarah Sellup. She's the head of 917 Strategies. Up late with me tonight on The Final Five. Good to see you. Good to see you. 917 or 917? It depends on how you're feeling. Is it Latrobe <laughs> or Latrobe? I thought it was Latrobe. It's Latrobe. Okay, good. Yeah. Talking about hometowns here. Uh, man, what, what, a, what a change in, in this race right now. And I got to ask, as things stand, is the, the, the bump from Kamala Harris, is mm -hmm. the, it, it, at some point that, that momentum peters out, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, so it's been 18, 19 days since she assumed the candidacy. Nobody's heard from her, and Brat Summer's already kind of on the outs. Like, <laughs> I have this whole thing when it comes to trends. I say it all the time to clients. But if you're in politics and you have a social media manager who is going above and beyond to follow the trends, yeah. like Brat from Charlie XCX, that's great. That's very creative. <laughs> but at the same time, what are you going to do after it moves on? D does it feel like... We, we we do the Pander Watch segment on here. Right. It was cute that you know the the, the Kamala's brat thing that that gained wildfire very quickly. But it, it, at some point, it does seem sometimes inauthentic. It is, and especially because she's the young gun here, right? Mm -hmm. She's about to be sixty, which is interesting to think about. Well, I mean, when you think about the state of politics, it is it is young, all things right. considered. That's why I'm for term limits. <laughs> Just saying. But so you always have to have a plan of action and. It's just getting to be too much. Obviously, honeymoon, everybody's excited about Kamala, but um, it's just one of those, you need a plan, because people are so excited around the country about her. They're going to the rallies, yeah. Megan the Stallion's performing, but that's great. How many of those people were there for Megan the Stallion, and how many were there for Kamala? Well, I mean, we saw that in 2016 with Beyonce doing, uh, doing, uh, doing exactly. concerts with Hillary Clinton. However, um, the polls had said for a long time people did not want to see a Biden-Trump rematch, and clearly they're not getting that at right. this point. Uh, the former president seems to, he's not really making the rounds as much as Harris has, but on the other hand, you know that when he goes to a Montana, the diehards are going to show up regardless. Right. And one of the things that's been bothering me about Biden, I actually just thought of this today for the first time, mm -hmm. where has he been? Like, I know that we always well, say that, like Joe Biden in the basement, but where is I'll he I'll point been? out to you, he was at the White, uh, White House yesterday, Texas Rangers were there, uh, but, but he's not been doing big events. Now, exactly. my understanding is that now that he is not running, you may be seeing him more at some of these these uh, these uh, American Rescue Act uh, ribbon cuttings, and he, he would sort of like be the ceremonial head of a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff. However, as we look ahead, you're right, a lot of people are wondering, and I think from a media perspective, yeah, we would like to hear from, from, from Vice President Harris. She should do a press conference. She should do more sit-down interviews. Right. But but the polls don't flesh. It doesn't seem like the polls are necessarily fleshing that out, that a lot of people are saying, I'm going to vote for anybody regardless uh, as long as they're running against Donald Trump. Right. I've talked to a few different people about this, and one of the big questions is, do we think that Kamala's voters will actually show up to the polls? Mm -hmm. Because everybody loves this energy right now, right? But even then, what's going to happen when we get closer? Obviously, there are always going to be things candidates don't like, but a little callback to what we were saying with social media, they're trying to make her look so accessible and authentic, but she's really inaccessible to the press. And it makes zero sense if you're portraying her as one thing and then the other. So what are the voters supposed to think? So you were talking about the celebrity angle with, with Megan Thee Stallion, right. and I forget who else is performing at some, some of Harris's events. Uh, but when you look at the likes of Joe Rogan, who has this huge podcast platform, mm -hmm. uh, today uh, came out and said he would vote for, for RFK Jr. in the mm -hmm. race. And a lot of people rightfully concerned on the Democratic side about what RFK would do in terms of their voter base, but as you see it, his share of the, of the vote's going down, and it seems like his voters, he's peeling voters away from Trump. Is that is that fair to say? Is RFK the spoiler for Republicans that Democrats seem to think he was about six months ago? No, I think it's the other way around. Obviously, a third party isn't great, but this is the most momentum we've had with a um, an independent candidate, I'd even say since Ross Perot. Mm -hmm. So it's also kind of the OG Nebo baby sort of thing as well. So there's some sort of name recognition. Yeah. And plus with the bear cub, like y'all are just gonna think about him. At least it's making- Or the brain worms. Sportsman. I know, I know. And honestly, I was at a libertarian convention a few weeks ago and he spoke keynote. It yeah. was wild to see how many people it's obviously it's third party, um, a third party sure. festival, but at the same time, everybody was excited about RFK Jr. 
So it's weird to see that turnout versus like the pre-made Kamala or Biden. It seems strange though, knowing that for a long, he, he, is, he has tried to peel himself away from Donald Trump for the longest time. Although when you hear some of these recordings and that weird recording that his son released where he was thanking uh, Trump for his support. And, and I, I think a lot of people are wondering where RFK stands as well on some of this because right. it's a little wishy-washy. Uh, honestly, I've talked about this a lot. I think I've talked about it with you. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to RFK being a Democrat, now an independent, now bear cubs and brain worms, <laughs> it's, you just need to pick your lane. Yeah. Um, RFK is getting a lot more votes than we thought he would. But at the same time, it we just need to get, get down to brass tacks. Um, put your support somewhere, withdraw from the race, because yeah. it's going to be Trump, JD, versus Kamala, Tim, regardless. Yeah. All right. Sarah, good to see you again. Thanks for coming good in. To see you. Always good to have you on the show. And the final five is back after this.